So here's my cord of wood for 2017, cordwood challenge. This is one third of a cord right here, and that's four by eight by 16 inches. Here's another cord right here. That's the same measurements. And then this cord is not a cord because these pieces are probably an average of like 10 or 12 inches wide. So that's a lot of cutting with an ax right there. And just those three stacks I just showed you is the same amount of cutting I did last year because no matter how long you cut them, a rick like this is the same amount of cutting, right? Even though it's not the same amount of wood. So in order to just really make sure I rounded it off to a cord, so this is four by four by 16 again, roughly 16. And then I actually have some extra wood and there's some more wood. I just went and chopped down another tree in the woods. So there's some more down there. There you go. First thing I learned was that uh, I got pretty rusty not chopping through the whole summer. I finished last year by about June 1st too, or before June 1st, same as this year. I had so much to cut with a chainsaw. I just did a lot of chainsaw work and I didn't really use my ax that much. So when I came back, I was surprised at how rusty I felt and how just clumsy the whole thing felt for a little while. So I busted out a couple trees and then I did that uh, Husqvarna review video and cut up a whole tree in that. By the time I was done with that tree, I was starting to hit my, my stride a little bit more, but really it was just the last like week or two that I just started kind of flying through wood and feeling super comfortable with the ax. And it's a great feeling and it's not just the coordination and the chopping, it's like the strategy, um, like fewer wasted blows in terms of strategy, and I know that can still be improved more. And also just knowing what to do in certain situations, because you're out in the woods and things are kind of tangly and you're limbing and there's stuff all over the place. And you just find yourself in situations where if you haven't done a lot of it before, you might be kind of like, you know, what do I do here? like with this thing and you know that I've done all that before so usually I just kind of like go and it right into whatever it is that needs to be done without having to really think about it and that just creates a better smoother more enjoyable workflow also it's just really fun now um, when I did that video where I felled this fir tree and I was just I was basically finishing up my cordwood challenge and I was getting some wood for a wood splitting video which I just filmed today and I got done with that and I was like yeah it's really nice to feel like okay I'm done with this thing and it's kind of stressful and I have other things that have been stressing me out that I haven't been doing maybe when I should because I'm doing this or making videos and stuff and so that felt nice but I got up in the morning first thing I wanted to do is go cut down a tree because I've just hit the point where it's super fun and I feel really competent and confident and there's just like a flow like I'm in the zone and it feels great and I just want to stay here and, and push it a little more. So this evening, before I went and filmed that uh, wood splitting video, I was just like, used that as an excuse basically to go and cut down a small tan oak tree. It was like eight inches or so. And man, I was really surprised at how fast I got that thing on the ground, limbed and bucked into 16 foot sections, or 16 inch sections rather. And I started to think, you know, because I was thinking earlier today about doing a video or talking about when these old accounts say like, oh, this guy put up a quarter and a half in a day, or that's his average, you know, one and, one and a half or one and three quarters or even two cords a day. They're talking about putting up like 36 inch logs, probably, you know, 32, 36 inches, maybe even four foot logs for industrial use or just to transport, you know, back somewhere to be cut with a saw as needed or something like that. Between that, you know, and cutting large pieces, cutting in nice wood lots where there's a lot of really accessible, easy to cut trees without too many limbs, and just getting into the flow like that and just realizing how fast I can work my way through wood when everything kind of just is really falling into place and there's not a lot of waste, wasted energy and wasted blows and wasted movement then yeah, that starts to make sense and I start to see how someone could do that, really do that. Okay, this is the main ax I used. It's the Council Tool Boys ax and I like it a lot. It's been great, a great little ax. Um, it came with a great handle. I just had to thin it out a little bit. I added this rawhide thing. I mean, people that have been hanging around my channel have seen the evolution of this ax. It's got some issues now. I cracked it a little bit in here and the head's actually pretty wobbly, but you know, it's still good. 
and uh, I think I can make it last a little bit longer. I really enjoyed using this axe. It's two and a quarter pounds. Pretty lightweight axe for doing a bunch of work, but really it isn't, and I just proved that. I started with this Husqvarna axe, and I didn't even grind the or file the bit at all. I just sharpened it and went right to work, and I just did one tree, and that was part of as an introduction to a series on modifying this axe, which I haven't got back to because this is really very light for a, a firewood axe. You know, I could sure I could have done the whole cordwood challenge with this definitely. It's it's capable and it's a fairly competent axe, but it's definitely not the right tool for the job. It's only uh, one and three quarters pounds. So really I only processed one tree with that. So I use this one just a little bit. It's a Grand's Forest Cruiser Axe. I you know, sharpened this side up nice and sharp and I kept this one a little blunt for splitting. It's uh, two and a half pounds. It's okay, but I really, this is way too curved for me. I'm really uncomfortable using that. And so to, for me to use this anymore, I need to modify it and make this less curved. Um, and I don't want to do that. This is worth a lot and I could modify or just get like a cheaper American head. So I'm probably going to sell this because it's actually worth quite a bit. I'll just fix it up and make it look cool. Stick it on eBay, sell it and use it to fund other projects because the status thing of this axe just doesn't interest me at all. And um, you know, I can get like a plum or something that'll be just fine. So I'd just rather sell that off. I use this a little bit. This is probably two and a quarter or even lighter. I think it's lighter actually. It's um, a really kind of a cruddy craftsman axe. And I just got it at a junk store for five bucks. The handle was warped. I steamed it and straightened it, oiled it up. And uh, use that one a little bit too. It's a little light. I mean, this is heavier like the the Council Boys Axe is slightly heavier, and I can tell the difference. It, it does make a difference. And I was going to use this one, which is a two and a half pound uh, wedge style axe. I did a video on this, but then I put this handle on it from House Handle, and it was slightly warped when I put it on, and I straightened it out by kind of like rasping it and just reshaping it. You know, there was enough there to work with, and now it's already warped again. So four out of five handles I got from House Handle are no good and the other one is the one on that little double bit axe and it's okay. And I stuck with light axes on purpose. I did all my splitting with these axes. Whatever axe I was using to chop is what I split with. I usually do my splitting in the woods just because I like splitting so much that when I finish cutting up and I have all those rounds laying on the ground I just start hitting them like I can't help it. And uh, it's not always Oh, whatever that's what i do <laughs> um, so i think last year i used one axe that was two and three quarter pounds but that's the heaviest axe i've used in the entire challenge and also it had the longest handle at 30 inches this is a 27 inch handle like it says 28 but it's actually 27. i'm perfectly comfortable with this handle the length it is um, i'll be going up in both weight and length and just starting to kind of like push that forward because for me, like the last two years have been establishing what I can do with the small axes that I'm used to. Because I've always used small axes. I don't really have uh, much use for like a full-size felling axe with a long handle. And honestly, when I'm processing firewood with something like that, it just feels super awkward. And like it's harder to get in places and limb. Uh, my bucking style is all about being close up to the log where I have the most power, like right here between my legs and I'm just used to it. I use these with one hand all the time. You'll see me do that a lot and they're just really easy to maneuver and flip around when you're working. So I think that what I'm going to do is I'll just start going up in weight and play with the length a little bit and really what I'm just looking for is the size of axe that matches me the best in terms of a head weight that I don't get tired of lifting but that will do a lot of work and a handle length that is really maneuverable and comfortable for me to use for versatile different you know types of tasks when you're processing wood in the forest and cutting you know cutting like this and cutting limbs and cutting above your head and all that stuff and I don't know where that's going to end up but my guess is it won't be over three pounds it won't be over three and a quarter pounds very likely it won't be over three pounds and I, I doubt it will be over 30 inches long probably less big uh, huge thanks and shout out to all the people who participated whether they did the whole thing or not 
Um, I'll do a video soon talking about all those people and linking all of them and stuff like that. But we have at least six people that have done a full chord or more. Flatland Woodsman, I think, did over two chords. So he's kind of like the, I think he won the, the most wood prize. But uh, then again, it depends on how long you're cutting it, right? So if you cut it shorter, then you're doing more chopping than if you cut it longer. Not that it's a contest or anything like that, but yeah.